Good afternoon. Thank you for taking the time to join us today for the Docker Differentiated Content Programs. Um, my name is Marina Kvitnetsky, and I am a product manager at Docker. If you have any questions or would like to reach out to me after the, the session, my Twitter handle is mkvitnetsky, and I look forward to hearing from you. Um, the, when we talk about the Docker differentiated programs, uh, specifically what we're going to talk about are the Docker official images, the Docker verified publishers, and the Docker open source programs. We're going to discuss what each of those programs uh, is and, and how you can use it uh, to help you with the development of your applications. So I don't know if you've had a chance to join us today uh, for the Docker keynote and, and hear Justin Cormack, who is the CTO of Docker, talk about the developers and sort of do the analogy of de the developers that like to drive on the paved roads or like going off-roading. But as I talk to the developers and sort of go through the, 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 this process of, of learning more about uh, all of the different, all of the, the things that the different teams are working on. One of the things that sort of comes very clear across very clear to me is that regardless of what their style of programming is, all of the developers are going really fast. And as I started thinking about sort of the speed of development and started uh, preparing for this talk, one of the things I, I came across uh, this quote for Mario Andretti, from Mario Andretti. And Mario Andretti is a famous Italian race, cars driver, race car driver. And the quote that, that sort of, the, the thing that he said at one point is that if everything seems under control, you're not going fast enough. And it occurred to me that maybe this works for the race car drivers, but it definitely does not work for software developers because no matter how fast we're going, and, and, and this is regardless of sort of which, which industry the, we we're developing the, uh, the applications for, no matter how quickly we're driving that speed of innovation, uh, no matter what the, the, the speed is, we can never lose control over our content. So in order to build the, 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 the speed, in order to, to sort of uh, to help us achieve that speed, um, at Docker, when we think about what are the things that we can do to help, um, to help developers uh, achieve that speed, we're looking at providing the building blocks uh, for create, for the, the, to help you basically get there faster or build the, the applications faster. But we're also thinking about what are the things that we can do to make sure that those building blocks come from trusted sources and those building blocks and how what we can do to make sure that those building blocks become part of your secure supply chain. And this is sort of where that discussion around the differentiated content comes in, because we can provide, uh, if, if you look at the entire, uh, the entire, entire landscape of the Docker hub or, or the Docker platform, there are 8.3 million repos that are posted on the hub. And there are 11 million developers that, that engage with Docker platform uh, on daily basis. There are 12 point, if you look at the rate uh, of the, the, the Docker, the developers pull information, pull, pull content from the hub. Basically during the month of April, uh, there were 12.4 billion pulls uh, that happened on the hub. Uh, that came from the hub. So how do we, and this is sort of part of the, the, the discussions that at Docker we're having is what are the things that we can do to allow you to navigate through all of that, that wealth of content and make sure that the, uh, the, the images that you're pulling from there come from, trust, from the trusted sources and, and become part of your secure supply chain. So when we talk about the, the Docker differentiated programs, the very first thing that we think about are the Docker official images. And, and, and essentially, this is a program that we started about six or seven years ago. These are curated and actively maintained images. And you know that anything that is a Docker official image is sort of the latest component that comes from uh, the maintainer. Uh, these are the open source images. Uh, so, and these are, these are so the, the, in, in, these are the latest uh, that are the latest components that are in there. 
Um, these are basically the mul these images support multiple architectures, and the list that's included uh, here is 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 a short uh, is just 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 a short list of of a much uh, the, the the actual number of our architect supported architectures is a much longer list um, and that's not to say that every single image supports every single um, architecture but if you look at the entire list of the architectures mo all of the the images support a number of different architectures um, and and basically there are about 150 images that are included in the official images and they include things like the uh, operating systems, databases, and languages. Um, and because of the types of the things that are included in the uh, in the official images, they become highly popular for creating base layers for new images. And, and this is sort of going back to that discussion, what can we do to help you uh, get there faster? You know, these are sort of the base layers, the foundation that you can use for building new applications. Um, the other, the other thing that the other use case that we're seeing uh, very frequently is that this is a official images are a very simple way for new developers that are learning their way around Docker and learning how to navigate Docker. This is the simplest way to get started. And and I was talking to a consultant uh, earlier this year that, that that works with a lot of teams and and, and, and trains them on on using Docker in their in in in, uh, in deploying Docker in their environments. And one of the things that, that he said is that it takes me longer to explain to them why they need Docker than to actually to get them started. And, and because sort of the, the official images are so ubiquitous in, in all of the, the development across a number of different uh, sectors of technology or, or sectors of the, the development, what we're realizing is that the official, the official images represent about 25% of all of the Docker pools. And no, not surprising, most commonly selected official images are things like Alpine, Nginx, BusyBox, and uh, Ubuntu. So if you've never learned, if you've never used official images, or if you want to learn more about them, the simplest way to get started, and again, this is the best place to get started for all things Docker, is the Docker documentation. Um, and, and if you go to the Docker uh, documentation, there is uh, there is a section there on official images. Uh, and, and it basically provides you with a general overview as well as pointers to any of the additional information that, that you need on the official images. And, and once you sort of get through that, higher level and you're ready to take the next, the deeper dive, um, the, 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 the place to go to is the GitHub. Because again, these are all open source images and the GitHub page, there's a GitHub, uh, there, there's a uh, GitHub uh, page that, that basically has libraries for all of the official images. Uh, as well as uh, the, the libraries that includes the deeper technical dive for all of the, for each of those images, including information of the, uh, architectures that, that, that each of those images supports. Um, in addition to that, uh, the, GitHub, the, the GitHub page also includes the description of the process for what it takes to become an official image. And it's a fairly rigorous process, which is why um, there's so many developers that basically really, if you look at all of the content that's posted on the hub, the number of official images are, is, is a fairly small sec subsection or subset of all of the hub content. And, and yet it is, it produces so much, um, th there's so much popularity around it. And, and again, it's because there are so many developers that, that already trust the content, um, that, that, that already trust the, the official images. Um, and and, and find the, that already trust uh, the images that are that are marked as the official image, that have the official images uh, badge. And, and, and finally, the if you've never tested it, go ahead and try and, and work with the official images. And basically, the way that you find the official images is if you go to the Docker Hub, um, in the left hand uh, corner, there are several uh, image filters included in there. So if you cl click on the official images 
uh, filter, what you will end up is a list of all of the images that have the official images uh, badge. And, and, and once you see that badge, this is sort of how you know that this is part of the official images program. And, and, and again, the, this is basically the, the, the building blocks that can help you build um, any, any kind of application that you're building. Um, Going beyond the open source uh, content, and, and this is where uh, the Verified Publishers Program is probably something that you've heard already several references to uh, during the, the DockerCon. This is a program that we recently launched that we're very excited about, uh, that we've started running as a pilot uh, sometime in November of 2020 and recently announced the, the GA of the program. And essentially, this is now expanding the uh, expanding the the selection of the the trusted uh, the trusted source content and going beyond the open source images uh, that are included with the official images and and taking it into the enterprise space. And in most of the the most of the uh, people that are most of the company the publishers that are included in that program. Our, our industry leaders that are that have already been using Hub for for a while to distribute their products and and are now basically we're building the partnership with the, these um, with these leaders as as part of uh, differentiating the their content uh, and and making sure that that again when when you see the when you see the 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 these um, publishers are part of the. Uh, the verified publisher program you know that this these are sort of this is the content that you can trust and and some of the the some of the uh some of the publishers that are already included in that program are places like arm canonical rancher datadog and ping identity um and again to find the verified publisher badge the simplest thing to do is go to the hub uh select on the verified publisher uh filter and, and you will end up with a list of all of the images that have the, the verified publisher badge. And when you look, when you see that badge, what you know is that this is sort of the, the content. This is the authentic content that's, that's, that, that we, that, that's coming from the publisher. And what, you, what this also tells you is that you're also, you we're eliminating the risk of uh, pulling an image, a malicious image from an imposter source. Um, one thing that I do want to note is that this is a rapidly growing program and rapidly changing program. So if you check on the hub and you're not seeing the publisher that you expect to see, the badge for a publisher that you expect to see, come back and check with us again in another week or a couple of weeks because again uh, this is this is something that the program that, that's picking up a lot of momentum and, and the, the, the badges uh, the verified publishers that, that we're including with the badges is is changing quite rapidly so um, if you want to get more information about the verified publishers uh, please check our website uh, docker.com uh, partners programs there's lots of information there or reach out to us and let us know if you have any questions and finally as we talk about the different um, differentiated content programs for docker we we want to focus on the the docker open source program which we launched about six months ago and this is purely part of the docker commitment uh, to promote the open open source development. Um, since we opened the program, there are about 120 organizations that enrolled into this program. Primarily, these are on nonprofits that focus on things like medical research, academia, and humanitarian aid. And, and if you look at some of the examples, uh, these are places like PharmaOS, Vaccine Impact Modeling Consortium, uh, UN Office of Coordination for Humanitarian Affairs. And again, these are basically the, the organizations that are leveraging technology to build the human development programs and and we work with them to to help them enable um to help them through their efforts um if you want to learn more about the the open source programs uh again please check the website uh, docker.com community open source let us know if you'd like to apply into this program uh we're constantly getting additional requests and and and, and looking and enrolling more programs in there so I hope that this has been helpful. I'd like to thank you for your time, uh, for your time today, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the DockerCon.
Thank you very much.